And she would embrace every opportunity to say something encouraging and uplifting to all and sundry. That smile was indeed radiant and glowing and would be the highlight of her memory, I believe. Life throws us sometimes some hard and curved balls, and I believe this is one of them. But we trust in the promise of God's eternal comfort. And we hope that she will rest in peace. Welcome one and welcome all. Let us pray. the life of Sister King and all the lives that she may have touched. The audience this evening is an indication as to the many lives, the many persons that would have been touched. As we pay our last respects, we ask for your guidance. We ask that you give us the strength so that every aspect of the program this afternoon will be conducted in a manner that every soul here would receive a blessing as a result. We do not pray for the dead, but we pray for those of us who remain and still linger in this pot of life brewing, as it were, until our moment comes. We pray that as we reflect on our life, it would be a means of helping us to examine our own life. Let us look for examples from these events. We ask in a special way that you bless the entire family, the children, her husband, her siblings, all the extended family that she so cherish. That those who are present here, those who are overseas, even those who are watching now through this the medium which we, we 
so gracefully have so that we can present this program and these events throughout the world. We are viewing now, we pray for you also, for friends and relations. And we pray that all of us will find peace in the midst of this terrible experience. Comfort us. Help that as we pause and listen to the many items that will be presented, that our own lives will be touched. And we would prepare to meet you when you shall call us. Because call us, you will. Help that we'll all be ready. Be with the pastor as he officiates also. Help that even his message would be one that exudes salvation, not grief and pain, because joy comes in the morning. Help that we all will be prepared when that morning comes, that we'll be reunited with all our loved ones who have gone before, and your people from all over the world to rejoice with you forever. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. song sheet, It Is Well With My Soul. Amen. 
Scripture readings are taken from Psalms 91 2 and 1 Thessalonians 4 16 and 17. Psalms 91 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My Aye. God in Him will I trust. Aye. 1 Thessalonians 4 16 and 17. Aye. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Here ends the scripture reading. of the following tributes, one from the Youth Ministries Department, one from the Indian Heritage Foundation, one from Miss Felicia Frederick, and then there would be a video, a tribute in the form of a video, video presentation, after which we will open the floor for some other tributes. So let's invite the Youth Ministries Department to pay their tribute.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have the note from the Indian Heritage Foundation, from the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation, to Mr. Arton King, Clint, Rory, Connie Olive, Union Vale Beckway. It is with deep sadness that we learned the passing of Mrs. Eileen King and a friend of the passionate and a passionate supporter of the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation. Mrs. King attended our functions with her daughter, Miss Connie Olive, both dressed in beautiful Indian outfits. She was always a proud of her Indian heritage and made certain that everyone knew she was related to the deans of Acres and her grandmother was a dean who married a judge and her father was a judge from Acres as well in the Calder area. From the records, it is a very large family, therefore Miss King was related to many, many persons of Indian descent. From our interactions with Mr. Eileen King, we found her to be a very lovely, kind, generous, fun, loving, hard-working Christian lady who loved her family and friends and who loved to help people. Mrs. King will greatly be missed by all those who know her. We will certainly miss her pretty smile and warm personality whenever we met and cherish memories and happy that we knew Miss Allen King. Our deepest sympathy to Mr. Arthur King, our two sons, daughter, grandchildren, and all the relatives and friends. May God grant our everlasting peace with him in paradise. This letter is from Mr. Junior Bacchus of the Indian Heritage Foundation. Thank you. As I was sitting in the back, I was wondering, what can I see? <laughs> I know I have to sing, but I'm saying, what can I see? Now, anyone who knows Mama, Miss King, would know that she is among the most positive persons you will ever come across. And I can speak for me personally, she was a big driving force with me at the Beckway SD Primary School. She was one of my biggest, if not my biggest supporter. Anything I could have counted on her, nothing was too big for her to give to me and to the school. You know everybody has a personal person. She was my personal person. And I stand here with a spirit that is settled because I know that this is a time for us, for me, to celebrate. She would have wanted us to celebrate and I, I don't think I can do anything more than to celebrate and to encourage us all to be prepared so when that midnight cry is called that we can join her as well. I hear a sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's getting closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call 
and at that midnight cry oh we'll be going home oh when jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children the dead and christ shall And those that remain Oh, shall be quickly changed Oh, at that midnight cry When Jesus comes again Oh, church if you look around you'll see the prophecies they're fulfilling oh yes they're fulfilling and signs of the times they're appearing everywhere oh I can almost hear the father as he said the son go get my children oh go get my children oh at the midnight cry oh the bride of Christ shall rise oh church oh when Jesus he steps out oh, on a cloud to call his children. Oh, the dead in Christ, they shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain those that remain oh shall be quickly changed oh they shall be changed and at that midnight cry when Jesus comes again oh church sing with me sing with me oh when Jesus he steps out out on a cloud to call his children oh the dead in Christ they shall rise to meet him in the
Why you want to see my ugly face? Was almost always her greeting to me every time I got to chat with my mama. Her words may appear mean, but it was her way of saying I love you. And we shared a bond only us understood. I may never hear your voice again, but I would always hear and know what you want me to do and who I should be. She always thought I should have been a homemaker. So she taught me many of her famous foods, including making guava jelly. I could never ask for a recipe, otherwise the answer would always be just dump and stir. So I followed her around quietly every opportunity I got to be in that kitchen with her. She taught me to walk in heels with a book on my head. She said I should never leave home without a handbag or always dress as if I'm going to visit the Queen. Fondest of memories I would always share with her is camping in park over the summer holidays or on weekends with family, creating memories I'm sure will never die. Her advice to me was always look in the mirror, know your word and choose someone like yourself. And those were her last words to me. We will never hear that horn in the harbour blowing again or see her lovely smile as she waved and greeted everyone. I'm sure we all share fond memories of Mrs. King, Sister King, Auntie Arlene, Mommy or Mama as I call her. as She had a vibrant personality which was very difficult to ignore once she was around. I'm sorry I can't be there today to share in this day and to fulfill your funeral wishes, but I'm sure you'll have an awesome send off. But you always told me I'll know where to find you. And yes, I know where you are. I know where you're going. And until we meet on that sweet day, I'd always hold those memories close to my heart every day. You will always be my mama and I would always love you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not a poet, but I wrote something for Mama. Your sojourn from this life has left a gaping hole in our hearts. We could never really be fully prepared for when a loved one departs. You were the firecracker in our lives, right up to your last. Camping, gardening, cutting bush for the animals, making farine, setting coals, castrating goats, no, that's all in the past. I'd always remember you, Mama, for your disciplined love. And I understand why you never let certain things slide. Like that time me, Raylene, and Tara disobeyed your orders not to cross the reef. And on our return, with a cuckoo stick, you cut our backside. Mama was a special woman, you see. A gem, often misunderstood. But if you knew her story, then maybe, just maybe, you would. And I know she has left with peace on her mind. And this is the advice I know she would want to leave behind. Love and express it while you are alive. Practice patience and understanding. In simple words, just be kind. For you know not the minute, the hour, nor the day when you or your loved one will pass away. So live well with others, repent and pray, and hope we can all be together reunited on that great getting up day. Whenever mommy and I attended functions, I was like a shadow. Wherever I was, I'd get a call. Um, I have this function to go to. Would you accompany me? 
And I could never say no to my mommy. Could never say no. Whenever there was an opportunity for speaking, be it a funeral, a wedding, a get together, whatever occasion there was, and we always sat together. She would always nudge me, elbow me, and as much as to say, get up and say something. So I was also her mouthpiece. But that's how it is. When your mom is only 15 years older than you, that is what develops as a bond, that not even death could break our bond. It's just a little moment, just a little break, just a little pause, until we resume in a better situation. In that land where there'd be no more crying, no more pain, no more hurt, no more falling out, no more quarrels, no more wars, none of the ills that attend us here currently. I know she would have nudged me and said, get up and do something. I, I, I did not plan to do anything. I know I'm shocking my husband and whoever else is here, be like, I really didn't. But I'm hearing her saying, get up and say something now. Why are you sitting down there? Get up and say something. But in recent times, <clears throat> she launched a song called Look For Me. While all the words and the sentiments may not echo doctrinal truth as in the Bible, you'd notice that I shifted some of the words to suit the situation, to suit the biblical truth. She liked to hum the song, Look For Me. Look for me, for I will be there too. And most times she would break down crying before she finished because she realized there's so many of her loved ones who are not walking in the path that the Lord desire. And so she would she start to cry in as much as to say, Lord, transform them, speak to them so that we'll see each other.
let's continue the celebration of the life and legacy of Sister King through open tributes. My encouragement to us is in the interest of time, let's make it short so we can get as many as we possibly can. I see Mr. Well, okay, Mr. Graves and then Mr. Isaac and Sister Pear. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this afternoon. I had the privilege of knowing Auntie Arlene all of my life. Most of you might be too young to remember me, but I actually grew up on Beckway from my primary school life and spent one year of my secondary school life there. You will remember that I grew up down the street at what was known as P.H. Rera when Charles and Stephanie Graves was managing P.H. Rera for various investment. But I remember Auntie Arlene as somebody who always look out for the children. I remember my many birthday chocolate cakes, my guava cheese, my fruit juices. I remember Auntie Arlene and her poodles. I remember Auntie Arlene and her shop at the front. I remember the first trip we on Beckway was with Uncle Orton and Auntie Arlene to Mustique. And I think Connie still hold the prize pictures of my brother and I being on the beach in Mustique with the family. My family enjoy a rich friendship with the Kings. And even when Anthony, who is my good friend, moved to Mountain View as principal, and I was in Mespo at Emmanuel High School, Mespo. We always continued the relationship. I remember when I was about to get married, I came back to Beckway and camp with the Kings at Park. And Auntie Arlene immediately accepted my wife and encouraged us to live for God. And in my review, my reflection of her, Auntie Arlene demonstrated Christ as the Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 2, describing the fruits of the Spirit when he said, Love, be generous, be kind. This evening, I encourage you, as we celebrate her life, to reflect on hers and try as much as possible to eliminate it, to use her life as an example and she impacted many lives many lives and i challenge you this afternoon that you will be used by god to impact the lives of the young people among you so uncle Arthur, brother on behalf of my father and i who and my father and my mother who wish that they could be here today and the entire family my brothers and sisters and my wife and son we pray that god will comfort you and strengthen you because he is the author of our faith, and he is the finisher. I pray that God will bless you abundantly, and see, give you the strength and comfort that you need to see you through this. God bless you all. May her soul rest in peace. Yes, I was saying good evening, everyone. I cannot sit there and don't say something about Sister Arlene King. I got to know Sister King in 1978 when I was working with the Cinder Bands in Spring. And then when I joined this church, Sister King was like not just a Christian sister, but a real sister, a blood sister. And then when I moved to Union Vale, she was even more to me. She will always say, Sister, hey, what you're doing? What you're doing tonight? Let us get together. And it was like that. We get closer. Even when we have potlucks, we will work together. 
when we have baptism, we will cook together. If I don't know something, she will show me. And that is the way Sister King and I got along. When I stopped working spring, after 36 years, one day she said, Sister Pia, I see a thing going up by you. Where are you going to? I said, girl, I can't sit down and I'm going to open a little restaurant because that is what I know how to do. She said, well, girl, good luck. And from the time I opened that little restaurant, Sister King was there present with Connie and Brother King. And whoever she could invite, she would invite them. They would come up. Sometimes, like, Sister King, what you, Sister Pierre, what are you doing up there? Man, Allington is here. We're coming up for dinner. Sometimes I have to start hustling and prepare dinner for Sister King. Sister King had supported me. She has encouraged me all the way along. I'm going to miss her tremendously. To me, Union Vale will never be the same again. Sister King, Brother King, you had a wonderful wife. Connie, oh, what a sweet daughter. The boys, Clint and Rory, they never pass me. And I know that she's going to be missed a lot. I will miss her. My family will miss her. Sister King, rest in peace. Not goodbye. We will see soon because I know you will definitely make it to the kingdom because any time you call Sister King, she have a word of encouragement. The last time we spoke, she said, Sister Pierre, you don't see what is going on. Now is the time we have to live closer to God. I saw Sister King Friday when I was going into the harbor. And Howard and I and Amos was in the car and we hailed her up. And she hailed me up. But about 5.30 when Betty called and say, girl, I have some bad news for you. I said, you always bring bad news. What is it now? She said, I said, who dead? She said, nobody dead, you know. But Sister King gone and hospital. I said, you stupid. I just talked to Sister King about two hours ago. So, brothers and sisters, life is very uncertain. Let us live for Jesus because we do not know the hour and the minute when we will be called home. Sister King, rest in peace. stand here to pay tribute on behalf of Woodrow and the Andrews of Arima Trinidad, of Anesta Thomas, of Calder, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of Cornelius Mac McIntyre, of Maruga Trinidad, and of Audley Charles of Bible, St. Vincent and myself from Bible. What do we all have in common with Arlene, brother, Connie, Rory, Clint? What do we have in common? We have been the beneficiary of Arlene's hospitality, generosity, love of life, and love of people, her culinary arts, and her entrepreneurship. As for Andy, the talk was, anywhere Andy is, he could smell Arlene pot. Because bet your life by the time Arlene take off the pot, Andy knocking at the door. Anesta was housed as a young teacher. In fact, I should say to you that we hold in common, we were all young teachers at the Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School, 1968 to the 1970s. All you people who have gray hair would remember some of those days. Those were the days before electricity, before telephone. If I go on, I could tell you some of the things that used to happen at that time. We were young teachers. So Andy could smell Arlene's pot, and he would reach there. But how did all of these blend in? Arlene loved young people, and we had a thriving Pathfinders Club. And I'm going to tell you how something came to Beckway that some people may not really realize. We were raising funds. 
And we were wondering what can we sell to raise funds. Andy, coming out from Trinidad, knew how to make roti. And so he said, we're going to have a roti night. Arlene could cook, and they could cook, so they put together. And at the end of it, we sold out. Everybody bought all the roti, but you know how much money we made? Just $28 profit. <laughs> When we began to analyze the thing, we said, we sold the roti too cheap. But it was the first time commercial roti was coming to Port Elizabeth. Arlene took it up in entrepreneurship, and she became one of the first sellers of roti in her shop. I remember her for the number of times Anchovy, roasted wrong spring, and sprat, and farine, and nobody I think could make a better pudding than Arlene, I bet you. So brother, and Connie, and family, it may sound and look to us like a short life. But the philosopher said that a good life, or a life that is lived good, is a long life. And there's no doubt in my mind that Arlene lived a good life. So on behalf of Andy, who couldn't be here, he's now residing in the United States of America. He said, Zix, you must go to Beckway and you must call me name to Arlene family. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. I met Sister Arlene about a year ago. I had just come back from, from having surgery and I came to the church to sing. And she met me outside and she said, you are the young lady that was sick, right? I said, yes. Before I could get the yes out of my mouth, she grabbed me up and she held me so close. And she said, God had a reason for you to be here. It would be remiss of me to come here today and not sing because she loved to hear me sing. So. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Anybody know it? Say what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And when I look upon his face, the one who saves me by his grace, and he'll take me by the hand and lead me to the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day. No more pain, 
No more parting over there And forever she shall be With the one who died for her Oh, what a day, glorious day Jesus I shall see and when I look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace and he'll take me by the hand and lead me to the promised land oh what a day glorious day Jesus I shall see and when I look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace and he'll take me by the hand and lead me to the promised land oh what a day glorious day In county, and I start to, I start to feel in pain to bring this child, and I have pain. I take in. I was feeling pain a whole night and a day, and Miss King comes down at my house, and she sits with me. I didn't have no other body, just Miss King as a friend, and she sits with me all night and all day. County man, we must see four o'clock the afternoon. Koja was a nurse, and she said, I'm not going to leave you, and I'm in the bedroom bawling, and Miss King out there bawling for me. And when she heard the child bawl, she ran in, and she said, this child is my child, this is my child, this is my nanny, this is, this is my grandchild. Oh, what a pink baby, this is my child, and I can't forget. And if I sick and I have to go to the doctor, I only have to say, you know, I have to go to the doctor. She said, which doctor are you going to? And I will tell you. She said, you alone are going. Ma'am, you are going with you. Me and you going to the doctor. And oh God, <laughs> Miss King was a really good neighbor. Every night she called me. Every morning she called. I tell Kanye all this. And she will say, who are you down there? You are your boyfriend? And I will say, girl, I'm going in my bed right now. In the morning, if she don't see me window open, she will call. And Sunday, Miss King will call me 11.30, 245, that line. I don't know if I will, that line just gone. She will call and say, what you cooking? And I will say, what I cooking? She will say, no, I'm going to put on my pot. And we will talk and we will laugh. Oh, God. God be with you. Rest in peace. You are a wonderful neighbor to me. Oh, God. I...
Good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon, I stand to bear tribute to a woman who was once a stranger to me, but gradually became more than a mother to me. A woman who had an infectious smile, a cheerful personality, and always had an encouraging word. A true nation builder, community activist, ardent church member, and a strong believer in Jesus Christ. A woman whose life and legacy has made Bequay better. A woman whose cheerful hand wave gives you hope and a reason to keep on going. Today, Sister Arlene King, as we memor memor memorialize her life and legacy, we do so with a certain hope. And even as I thought about this tribute, Pastor Edson Augustus called me this morning. In fact, he woke me up just before I was preparing to come to Beckway. And he said to me, I want you to remind the folks in Beckway that Sister King's life was one that will be remembered as an individual who was never afraid to give. Pastor Augustus remembered Sister King as one who, whenever he would have planned camps to Beckway was always eager and excited to share whatever she had with the young people who were coming to camp. Often found herself in the camp's kitchen, though unassigned as camp cook, always willing to give what she had. And so today as we celebrate the life of Sister Arlene King, we do so understanding that her voice is silence. Her thoughts perish, her passion grounded, and her witness stalled. For the grim reaper of death has snatched her from us. We mourn her loss, but we celebrate her many years of blessing humanity. We celebrate the many contributions she has made to her family, the society, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church on the island of Beckway, and wherever we went. She went, sorry. We celebrate her as a woman who loved her family, boasted about her husband, and cherished her children. Today we celebrate Sister Arlene King as one who was ever supportive of every church activity, whether it be Sabbath school or AY, whether it be church social or communion, we celebrate Sister Arlene King for her outstanding words of encouragement, the counsel she offered, never judgmental, but more so empathetic and understanding. We grieve her loss, but we remember her adorable personality. And so today as I stand, I am comforted and I hope that you too will be comforted in the fact that knowing that she lived her life with unquestionable dignity. She walked with propriety, she lived, she stood upright in integrity she spoke with authority she dressed in probity she she lived in humility she rejoiced in ecstasy she she soared in serenity she lived with piety and now she is resting awaiting eternity i pray today that we may find comfort knowing that one day soon and very soon the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise.
afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here in two capacities. First, I'm here to represent my family. Many of you might remember me. Um, my family and I, we spent a few years, three short years, living in Beckway here, whilst I serve as principal at the school during the time Mr. Hortiz was away studying. Two of my lovely daughters are here who had their foundation years here in Beckwith, Shariel and Shanice. Could you just stand so the folks can see if they can remember you? All right, that's, those are the two, the elder of the two children, the two younger ones were the babies in Beckwith. Um, it was a pleasure, sis, the few years in Beckway and the King's family, Sister Arlene King, um, they touched our lives as well. And there's one word that I heard coming through over and over again, and it's the one word I plan to use to describe Sister Arlene King, and that is that infectious laughter. And I've heard it so many times already for the afternoon. A warm personality and that infectious, inviting laughter of Sister King. She is going to be missed. I'm also here in the capacity as principal, or head of the family at the Mountain View Adventist Academy. I think all of us would know that, well, Mr. Olivier, first of all, served, as a matter of fact, he holds the distinction of being the longest serving principal of the Mountain View Adventist Academy. And he, he has left, but he has left, um, I don't know if it's a better half or the other half of him with us, Mrs. Oliver. And um, we could not, having heard of the passing of Sister King, we couldn't allow this service of pass without, you know, um, being represented here physically. And so I just want the staff members and students to have journeyed all the way from Milan uh, St. Vincent to come to give support, to just stand for a brief moment. Um, staff members and students, yes, including Ariana. <laughs> yes, all right, staff and some other staff members are at the back there. All right, we just want you to know um, members of the King's family, Sister Olivier, and other members of relatives that we share your grief, we share your loss. Take comfort in the words of the psalmist, Yea, though I walk through a valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Take comfort. God bless you. The indication is that we will end the tribute session at this time and uh, join together as we celebrate, Pontivity celebrate, by singing the hymn, I Come to the Garden Alone. It's, uh, it's on your sheet, so at the appropriate time after the prelude, we will stand and sing to the glory of God. I come to the garden alone.
I come to the garden alone while the Jew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The Son of God is closes and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go the voice of war, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. Has ever known. Please be seated. After the doxology, Judy will give her tribute and song selected by David. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank everyone for coming out and showing your support. Before I read the eulogy, as I sat there, um, I heard Mr. Bowman talk about Auntie Arlene's <laughs> infectious laugh, and something came to mind. When Arit was a little fella, summertime, he packed his bag and he gone. So one day, <laughs> we were up there and um, there were some little kids, goats, and Lashi decided to put Arit on the back of a goat. And the goat took off with him. And he's there bawling for mother, and Auntie Ali, they put it, Go, Baba, go, hold on. <laughs> and she laughing. <laughs> when he finally got off, he said, Don't matter with them, Baba. You're good, good. You did good. <laughs> I heard of her generosity. She was generous. When every, anything, anything that was there to be shared, everybody got a share, including licks. I remember quite a few 
instances, but one, e we even got it on a Sabbath. Clint was responsible for that. When he is Sabbath, when we reach home from Sabbath school, it was lunch, you take a little shower, you go to lie down. Clint decided that we should go down the hill to pick tangerines. We real stupid, you know. We are even thinking, well, she gonna smell. I could just imagine the conversation between her and Uncle Arthur in the bedroom. It would have gone something like this. Brother, you smell that? And he would have said, hmm, what? You ain't smell tangerines? And he'd, yeah, I think I smell tangerines. Wait, with them children? I ain't hearing them. Well, the next thing we know, we heard, hey, what are you doing down there? And you know how that went. But it was all a part of discipline that she believed in. It was done in kindness. Even after licks, there was no, there was no scratch on your skin. But you felt it. So this is her eulogy for Trevor Arlene King. Trevor Arlene King came to the light of day April 1st, 1948. She was the daughter of Oral Gooden and Joseph Dean George of Acres, St. Vincent. Arlene never met her father in person as Oral's mother refused to let them marry. She did not want her Oral, she did not want her Oral to leave home. That should have been her Arlene to leave home. So Joseph left for Trinidad and did not return until 1968. By then, he was terminally ill and died shortly after. Arlene was raised by a strong-willed mother and a grandfather who loved her dearly, Dada George Gooding. She would often say that her love for animals and planting food came from Dada. Her mother, Aurel, was Dada's shadow, preferring the outdoor activities than domestic responsibilities. So she assisted in caring for the cattle, sheep, and goats, and doing the planting of the ground. This served to nudge Arlene at an early age to assume home duties in an effort to help her mama. Arlene cared for her five siblings, all brothers, Elvin, George, Allenton, Delano, as we know Uncle Tuzi, and Gart, Uncle Sparrow. She learned to cook early and so improve the skill, as, a, as many of us here this afternoon will agree. She would often joke about two things. Firstly, her name, Trevor Arlene. She would say her mother had a boy's and a girl's name picked out for the baby. And since she liked both names, gave Arlene the first name, Trevor, a boy's name. Secondly, her date of birth, April 1st, she would declare, whenever someone tried to pull a prank on her, don't think I, because I was born on April 1st that I'm a fool, huh? Arlene attended the Seventh-day Adventist Primary School and was always happy to meet and greet her past schoolmates, even the mischievous boys who frequently tied her long black hair to the back of the bench. She was known as a songbird and pretty too, and was referred to as the teacher's pet. However, this did not prevent one teacher, Sister Gabriel, from labeling her pot salt because of her keen curiosity, always wanting to be included in many of the school's activities. In those days, it was customary for the family to join with many other relatives who met after church on Saturday evenings. Aunt Lil's house, now the rendezvous, 
found happy families catching up on the past week's happenings. It was one, on one such afternoon while brother played the quattro and Arlene sang away that brother told her, one day you'll be my wife. Arlene got extremely upset, ran and told her mother what brother had just said to her. Two years after, brother's proposal became reality and they were married on the 5th of June, 1962. Her younger brother moved in with Arlene and brother soon after their wedding, and so they began married life with five-year-old Tuzi and Clint. Eleven years later, Joseph completed our family. As a family unit, they were extremely close. The children were taught the value of work and responsibility. Having home chores, tying out goats and cattle, became part of their everyday routine. Arlene believed there was dignity in work, and idleness was never entertained. Arlene was alone with the children for weeks, even months at a time, as brother had to make a living fishing down the keys, and if at home, he left at 4.30 in the morning to go miles on what is known as the edge to fish. She spent four years in the 1960s caring for the home and family while brother worked in the USA. It was not easy for a young woman, still in her teens, alone too, to care for the home and family. When the children were grown, the entrepreneurial itch took hold. Her first venture was in her short back Land Rover, plying her sweets and treats. Soon she expanded to constructing and retrofitting the Kingfisher Cafe on the front street. Her delectable sweet potato pudding was a hit. This was a large part of her ministry. Many have come to know Miss King from her friendly spirit as she fed many. In 2001, Arlene fell ill and was taken to Trinidad where she had stents placed in her heart. She was forced to scale back on her food preparation venture. Occasionally, she ventured out under the almond tree in her white bird van with a few dozen turnovers, rotis, and other tasty treats, drinks, and wholesome home-cooked meals. These were often greeted with great delight by her patrons. Arlene was a God-fearing Christian lady. She began her day with private devotions and roused her household each morning for singing and reading of the scriptures. She always stressed God first. As a member of the Port Elizabeth Seventh-day Adventist Church, she functioned as Sabbath school superintendent for many years, was a member of the community services, and served as investment secretary. She was convinced the Ten Commandments are God's guidelines to mankind for living obediently, in good health, and successfully on this planet. We could hear her saying, the first four points to our relationship with God and the other six typifies man's relationship to each other. The immeasurable depth and breadth of love Arlene had for her family could only be experienced. Family was her all. She loved, she loved the outdoors and insisted on spending each Sunday picnicking, hiking, or visiting natural sites on the mainland. She was fun-loving, yet a stern disciplinarian and never spared the rod. The children and grandchildren would say, Mama was the master of the belt. She had a particularly close bond with her grandchildren. Raylene, her first granddaughter, 
knew her likes and dislikes than most others. Mama Arlene discussed with Raylene in a joking manner how she wanted to be buried. She loved bright, beautiful colors. Don't bury me in black. I want a pretty dress. One of the many statements she made was, give me flowers now while I'm alive. We think her favorite country song, Paper Roses, is an apt reflection. She loved flowers, and Clint ensured on many of her birthdays and Mother's Day. His mommy was gifted with an arrangement bouquet or an orchid plant. Each orchid was given the name of a child or a grandchild. So there was Roren, Kevin, Damien, Raleen, and Delight adorning her rooftop garden all currently in full bloom. Some mornings when, when attending the orchids, she would talk to them as they were named and could be found kissing the blooms as she wished them healthy growth. Her go-to boy was Lashi. He was her repairman, right hand, and straight talker. When Arlene would get upset and dis disagree with the advice or perception of others, not so with Lashi. She would look at him in a particular way, as if to say, boy, what nonsense you seen. They shared a special bond. Going to the harbor and doing her shopping was the highlight of her day. The fish shell would blow early morning, and she would leave home to see what fish there was, and would always return home with fresh fish, Tooting her horn and waving was her way of greeting her harbor people, as she called her friends and acquaintances. So on her final Friday, June 24th, it was not different. Shortly after returning home from the harbor, sitting at a dining table, Arlene was struck with a massive stroke and succumbed six days before celebrating the 60th wedding anniversary. Anyone who met her discovered she was a special lady, kind, straight talking, generous, and loving. She impacted many lives on her island home. Connie, Rory, and Clint will forever miss their mommy. Brother, his dear side rib, Josette, her Auntie Arlene, Arlington, his dear sister, Damien, Raleen, Roren, Kevin, and Delight, their mama, and Seth, his mama Arlene. We, her family, are certain we will see and meet our dear one, whom today we let to rest until that great getting up morning. To her numerous relatives and friends, church family, and all who knew Arlene, she would say, be comforted. I will not be asleep for long. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. Good evening, everyone. When a time on earth is over When the race of life is run When no more I feel sad teardrops in my eyes With my trials and worries over and all my burdens gone 
take me home old friends that gone before me I'll wait there one glad day and they'll all glad to see me this I know and we'll walk the streets of heaven and with angels there we'll sing for I have known what loving Jesus means take me home across the great divide deep and wide take me to my place in heaven there to spend eternity my precious gentle Jesus take me home my precious gentle Jesus take me to recognize some very important people here this evening. I'm seeing uh, Mr. Carlos Williams, Deputy Director of Grenadines Affairs, here in the balcony. Yes, I see you there. Uh, Dr. Friday would have been here. I don't know if he is, but I think his wife is somewhere around. So please accept the recognition for us. Uh, well, Mr. Filmo Isaac, yeah, he's a distinguished adopted son of the soil. Yes. And the Sigmund Wiggins, you there? I see it. I'm always happy to see him. Well. Give him a clap though, please. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Curtis Graves, he's one amazing principal. He's a police officer too, you know. He go look for students wherever he, um, he knows where they are. He, he go and look for them. Just get some people. Come in the van. Let's go. Let's go. Where are you going, principal? Uh, just go. Let's come. Let's go. And get the principal. Uh, give him a hand, Toto. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Good fellow. The staff and students of Mountain View. Uh, sister, sister, there's, there's seats up here. And instead of standing all the time, right up front here, next to Jason, there's a seat right there. Yes. And... Uh, I want to recognize Clint. Give Clint a hand for me, please. Some years ago, I, I came here to do some ministry for a week, and I had to return on the Sabbath to bury my nephew. The pastor told me, don't worry, we'll get you over. The Sabbath after preaching, I went out on the wharf, and the summer on the side, and this guy came to me and said, Pastor, you just sit down, sit inside there, put your back there, and you will be fine. <laughs> Ken came on to the boat, and uh, he was having his favorite beverage. And I was 
a little concerned. He said, Pastor, don't worry. And he continued to drink his beverage. And Pastor is getting worried. We head out, turn the corner. I sat on the seat, and I hold on here and I hold on there. And I bracing myself for the, um, the channel. And he's talking to me, and he's just watching the sea, and he's going. And then I said, we, we reached the book, I said, he said, Pastor, we passed that already. <laughs> he said, Pastor, listen to me. I just travel this water night and day, even in the night. Women have to go to the hospital to have baby. It's me they call in. Relax, Pastor, relax. Listen to me. It was a nice ride, Clint. Straight down to bottom tongue, and I got off and ran up the road and bury my nephew. Remember that, Clint? Mm, you must remember. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I went over to the turtle sanctuary. And I went to see if I see Brother King. When I got there, I met Clint. And uh, we had a conversation and we were talking. And one of the things that, you know, just amused me on that day, he said, uh, I went up to the hospital to see my mom. I took, call me a sentimental fool. I took a bouquet of flowers for her. I, I said, but that's amusing, a sentimental fool. But that's a good thing. Give Clint another hand for me. It's nice. Topic of the sermon today is Are ready to sing. This life is a journey filled with surprises. Along the way, there are many interesting experiences that impact and impede our progress sometimes. At times, we have moments of euphoria when our hearts are overflowing with joy. But there are times when the road is rough and thorny and trackless as the Froman Sea. During these, uh, this pilgrim journey, my brothers and sisters... There must be a place of comfort in our minds where we can tune in to experience peace and calm. We must find a place to meditate, to refocus and repair our brokenness. I asked you the question this afternoon, what do you do when the issues of life press painfully on your fragile emotion? Oh, for some people, it's a time to quarrel or curse. While for some, some uh, it it's, might even be a time to fight. But for some, they just go in a corner somewhere and sing a song. When it's a country and western song, a good old, a good old hymn of the song of the people of Israel. Whatever song it is, once it's a song that extols the beauty and the power of Almighty God, just sing a song. The Bible contains, the Bible contains several references to singing. And it is only given direct command, it, it also gives direct command to sing. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul encourages the Ephesian brethren when he says, When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. As you praise the Lord with all your heart, brothers and sisters, if you go, if you go to a harvest, sing songs. If you go to a street meeting, sing songs. When you come to church, somebody talk to me. Sing songs. Sing songs at funeral as well. This service, may I inform you, is not a funeral service. It's a celebration service. 
So we are singing here. We are praising God here. And we are preparing our own souls for a day when a song will be sung by all the redeem of the ages. Get ready to sing the song. I want to sing that song. In the very same message Paul gives to the Colossians, in Colossians 3.16, it says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your heart. Matthew 26 and verse 30 indicates that Jesus engaged in singing. The Bible says when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. There is something, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, about singing. There is something about singing. To me, it's therapeutic. You know, you have ever had a heartache? Ever had a real trying time? Have you ever lost something? Oh, those young people, you know, have you ever had a tabanka? And you go find a good song and you just sing that song. And as you sing, you cry. But as you cry, you feel, you know, the pain seems to be coming out of you. And so you thank God. So young people, when you have a tabanka, find a spiritual song to sing. Are you with me now? Those of us who are married, when things are not going right, find a good song to sing and give praise to God. Are you still with me this afternoon? Song is therapeutic. Something about singing that is comforting to the mind and the body. Singing soothes the soul and rejuvenates a broken spirit. It produces energy. And lift you out of the dull drums of hopelessness and despair. Yes, good singing can do that. Today I want to point you to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. The Bible says. And at midnight. That's the story of Paul and Silas in jail. Even when you are in jail. Or in a jailhouse situation, you can sing a song. Hello, somebody. Doesn't matter what's pressing you. You can sing a song and you can give praise and thanks to Almighty God. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They did what? And sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. The Bible says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. Somebody say hallelujah. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Somebody say, praise God. So that the prison was shaken. And as the prison was shaken, brothers and sisters, something dramatic happened. An earthquake as well rocked the place. And the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And he, everyone's bond was loose. Why? Because Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises to God. But didn't sing no song to no big audience and jump some jump and wave something. Hmm? But they sing they sang to Almighty God. When you want your blues. To be blown away, sing praises to Almighty God. Have you ever tried it? You come to church, wherever, and, and you, sat, you sit in your seat and you're feeling so upset and hurt. And then the singing starts. And tell me something with Chanel. When Chanel starts to pray, so, Chanel, you hear? Yes. And when Chanel starts saying, well, bigger than all my troubles, I'm bigger than all my fears. You start feeling inside. There is something strange operating inside. It's the spirit of God coming through the singing. Are you with me this afternoon? Oh, brothers and sisters, 
Your blues can be blown away. Your heartaches can be settled when you turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. When you take, when you take the songs of Zion and make them your, the sentiments of your own hearts. The prison house shook. Immediately the doors were open and every bands were loose. If there was a time when we need to sing spiritual songs and lift the name of Jesus high, the time is now. If there was a time when they need to be singing in the schools and singing in the home and singing in the church and singing everywhere about Jesus and his love, that time is now. Hey, brothers and sisters, those who run the fans, I know, I know you like your music, but somehow you got to change the rhythm now. You got to change the tune because we are living in the edge of time. We are to turn the songs around instead of those songs that doesn't say anything but debase women and, and, and just mix up the minds of young people. Start singing, Precious Lord. Take my hands. Lean me true this barren land. Oh, there is need for good singing right now. Somebody shout, Lord, I lift your name on high. I long to sing your praises. Oh, brothers and sisters, we have to sing in the morning, sing in the evening. Sing of God's goodness that keep running after us. When you are friendless, sing songs like, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. We need to sing songs like, Just when I need him, Jesus is there. Just when I falter, just when I fail, he's ready to help me, ready to chair. Just when I need him most. Uh, we got to sing songs that will draw us and pull us close to Almighty God. Sometimes we can sing audibly with conviction. But at times we can only manage to hum the song through the physical pains, painful memories of the past. And the increasing difficulties of life. Somebody tell me sugar going to get scarce. It was scarce already. Lord, we have to sing. Are you with me? And that's only the big enough sorrow, you know. Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. Even though you have two bags put up, you got done. Are you with me still? So, so, so there are times, times are coming on us when, when the only place we can go to find some comfort is in Jesus. And the only tool that might be available to us is a good song. Are you with me now? When the troubles rage in our lives, in our homes, we can sing songs like, Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. The skies are flowing in blackness. No shelter for help is nigh. Oh, you will find how important a song is. I must tell Jesus. Sometimes the sentiments of the song. The songs are too powerful for a fragile emotion. So we burst into tears sometimes when we sing that song. I must tell Jesus, all of my, come help me somebody. All of my troubles, I cannot bear these burdens alone. Oh God, how sometimes we cry. Jesus, we cry. I must tell Jesus. Because Jesus can help me. Only Jesus alone. Sometimes what you're going through, only Jesus alone can help you. And a song can preach that to your soul. You have burdens today. Tell them to Jesus. Sing them to Jesus. 
humble him to Jesus, cry to him, ball out to Jesus, but make sure you tell Jesus because Jesus can help you. He can help me only Jesus alone. And by the way, only those who have a connection with Jesus would find spiritual singing and prayers important. If you don't have no connection with Jesus, prayer never mean nothing. People could come and sing and they're singing and you lie down there and you're not moving. You know why? Because there's no connection between you and Jesus. So if a good spiritual song is going to mean something to you, then you have to be connected. I beg you today, if there is no connection between you and the Savior just as yet, please make that connection today. I counted. I consulted with Moses as I hurry on. Who knew his God by experience. And he gave me the story. You know the story very well. God's people were enslaved in Egypt's bondage. They cried. Some died. But the time came when they left Egypt. After some 450 years. Things were going well until they reached the Red Sea. You are acquainted with sea. They encountered the Red Sea before them. On the left, mountains. On the right, the same. And behind them, Pharaoh's army. <sighs> Watch me, brothers and sisters. Sometimes God passes us through some frightening experiences. But you know what? He always has an escape plan. If you are boxed in by circumstances this evening, know for sure if you turn your life to God, he will find a way out for you. Are you with me? Call upon me, he says, in your time of trouble. And I will deliver. The psalmist David says, God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Call on him today. So Moses and his followers, they were boxed in by the Red Sea in front of them. Pharaoh's army is behind. Be, uh, Pharaoh's army behind. And mountains on both sides. What were they supposed to do? What would you have done? Pharaoh was coming furiously with his choice soldiers to get the children of Israel back. I believe they were frightened. Who wouldn't be? Some were con contemplating turning back. But ladies and gentlemen, when you're off with Jesus, when you're moving with Jesus, there is no turning back whatever the circumstances. Keep moving forward. And so, so the Bible says, God devised his plan. In fact, he put his exit plan into practice. In focus, in sharp focus. And he told Moses, he says, now take your rod and do what I tell you to do. Moses placed the rod across the sea. We know the rest. The sea opened and the children of Israel walked over on dry land. So over on the other side, it was celebration time. Over on the other side of the, jaw, of the river, of, of, of the Red Sea, was time for singing. The choir got together. The people came together and they sing. They sing. Look at the song that they sang. Here is, the, here is what the Bible says in Exodus 15, 1. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. Who should we sing to? Yeah. He, for he has triumphed gloriously. Why should we sing? Because of what he has done for us. The horse and his rider, he has thrown into the sea. 
The Lord is my strength and song. We are singing the song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. Hello somebody. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army. He has cast into the sea. His chosen captive also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like stone. Watch a big tune. When you praise God, when you trust him, big things does happen. When you praise God and you put your troubles to him about your neighbor who are always on your case, he go fix your neighbor for you. You don't have to do nothing. Too often we try to do things and mess up things. Leave it to God. Are you with me? Yes, 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 yes. Your neighbor don't want to see you prosper. Don't, don't, don't worry with him. Don't, 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 don't take him on. Don't, take it. don't go try to do nothing. Leave it to God. Are you with me still? Mm -hmm. The end of the song says they sang to the bottom like stone. Them troubling you, leave them to God. God, go deal with them. That's a big tune. But there's still a bigger tune to drop. This, this tune will drop in the finals. Revelation 15, 1 to 4. John says, I had a vision. And I saw this. He said, I saw another sign in the heaven. A great and marvelous, mar marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plague. For in them are the wrath of God. Are you with me? Trouble is coming on the earth. Judgment is coming. You know, we constantly say, I want to do right and I want to do this. And I go give my life to the Lord. But God knows my heart. He know the flesh willing, but the spirit weak. Which one of them is first or which one is second? However, and we continue to do our foolishness. But one day, are we still together? One day, God in his mercy would say, it's, 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 it's over now. Probation is closed. I give you enough time to get yourself together. Are you with me now? And so John says, I saw the angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over his number, over his name, standing on the sea that looks like glass, with harps in their hands. They're getting ready to play and sing and praise God. Then the Bible says in verse 3, they sing the song of Moses. Hello now. The song of Moses is a song of victory. Remember when they got over the Red Sea, they sang because they came over victoriously. And now we are seeing another scene here of victory. This will be the final victory for earth's people. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have to be in that choir to sing that song. You see me? I ready to sing. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, here is the song. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Can you say the works of God is great? Just and true are your ways, O King of saints. O who shall not fear you? Lord, and glorify your name, for you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. That's the final song of victory when we are liberated from this earth and all its troubles. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to sing?
this will be the day of victory. The same time when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Some people don't want to hear nothing but on Jesus these days. But the time will come when you go want to hear it. But you're not going to hear it, you know. Or you may hear it, but you don't make no sense. Because there's no connectivity between you and the master. This is the time to connect. Some people will be positioned in a safe place. While others will be facing the wrath of God. I want to sing that song. The song of victory. You can sing that song too. But you have to ta start practicing now. You have to turn your life over to Jesus. Confess your sins. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can sing that song. You have to turn over, however. It can't be business as usual. You come to the service and you listen and go back home as usual. No! You must make a change, man. Confess to Jesus today. Take him as your savior and your personal friend. You have to turn your life over to Jesus and start singing the song. For me, I ready to sing. In your hearts today, you want to say, Lord, I want to sing the song of victory as well. I want to live for you now. I want to live for you. I have my struggles, but I want to live for you. Is there somebody who wants to say, I want to live for you, Lord? Just raise your hand. Just wave that hand. Come on, raise your hand. Raise them. Raise them. Young people, everyone, just raise your hands. Wave you. In the balcony, raise your hands. Heaven sees those hands today and knows your heart. Chanel, come get a mic. Come, come, come. I want to sing the song of victory. Decide in your heart today while you are you sitting that Lord I want to live for you and I want to cross over and want to be in the choir to sing the victory song. Make it serious today. You raise your hand but make it serious. I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he gave us life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood Atoning, and I repent. Repent of your sins that you sing, and get the victory, and sing it together. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing. Of his cleansing power revealing how he made a lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cry, Lord Jesus, 
come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory claim your victory now oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood he loved me and i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory before we sing the next answer before we sing the next answer every time i come here to preach Sister King will sit right across there. And when something come over real nicely, she will just uh, she laugh. I remember her right there. You know, I may remember something about Sister King as well. We have a project right now to get a good system for the church. And by the way, if anybody wants to make a donation, you can do that. Just write a check and give it to any one of our members and we, we can... Oh, Brother Ron is right there on the street every day. If you want to make a contribution to the system, you can do that, the PA system. So we can have a nice system here when we have funerals and so on. Sometimes this one gives trouble. But that is not the main point. But keep that in your head. When we made the appeal for the system, Sister King... On her way out, one Sabbath came smiling to me. And she's digging my hand to open it. And then she rests in it. It's a hundred dollars. She said, all right, put that to the thing. She said, okay. She was going out. About a week or two ago, sometime before she died, you know. She was going out again. I was by the door shaking hands. And I, sh I pushed my hands for her. I should put in money again. I passed it on to Brother Ronnie. I said, this is from Sister King for the system. She was going out. She was going out. She's gone out now. The project, we have to complete it. In her honor. So anybody has money to contribute to the system. Money to contribute to the system. Sister King will like that. Give it to Brother Ronnie Dessel. Give it to Jason. Give it to Brother Walker. We go get it. And soon we will have the system. That nice? Final so. Final. Final. I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea, I just singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day. I, come on and sing the song. The song. Sing it now. Sing it. In. Oh, victory! And everybody singing. My Savior forever He sought me and brought me With His redeeming blood He loved me yeah, I knew Him And all my love is to Him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood Oh, victory In Jesus, my Savior forever He sought me and brought me With His redeeming blood He loved me and I knew Him And all my love to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing your heads are bowed and eyes closed loving father I present my brothers and sisters to you today who have sang so beautifully this song praise 
and prayer. Victory in Jesus. We all need it, Lord, in our lives. We need your power so to do. We pray, Lord, today that you will break chains. Lose somebody today. Somebody who is sick. Somebody is held by the captive by the devil. Somebody who is hooked on drugs. Somebody, somebody, Lord, who need your liberation. Somebody who need your victory. Pass by now, Jesus. Even, even as they hum this song, even as they go, even as they go humming this song, may your spirit come and bring liberation, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to ask the family to come around right here. All the families. Children, grandchildren, brothers, uncles, find a space around. Find a space around the casket. Yes. There's a land that is fair than Come on and sing and clap now, man. And by faith we can see in a far from a circle, from a circle around them. No, it's over the way to prepare from a circle, from a circle. Come on. In the sweet by and from a circle, from a circle. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and push it forward. On that beautiful shore, out to a bountiful Father above, we shall offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that in the sweet, in the sweet by and by we shall come I want to see a circle I want to see a circle fill in the gap fill in the gap I want to see a circle come on around come on around yes come on around those who are outside the circle come inside on that beautiful show the melodious songs of the blessed and the spirit shall sorrow no more in the sweet by and by the beautiful show in the sweet by and by we shall meet Our heads are bowed and eyes closed, Father, this evening. At the end of this service, right now, we pray. Oh, a special anointing on this family who's saying goodbye to a real matriarch, mother, friend, confidant, counselor philanthropist she she's gone hearts are broken some lives will never be the same again but it is all because of the wages of sin Lord we all will go this way but those of us who remain I pray Lord Jesus for your comfort Brother King, in a very special way, he has to live without his wife of almost 60 years. God, please grant him the strength and the resilience he needs to be able to live, to survive. Grant him comfort by day and by night. I pray for children grandchildren brothers and sisters and whole family Lord keep them together keep them together
if there be any rift in the family, fix it today, Lord. Fix it. So there will be victory today. Right now. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory for your intervention. Comfort the entire family, Lord. Keep them together, we pray. For Christ's sake. As the musician continues to play, let's get ready for the recession now. And uh, the platform will leave first, followed by the family and friends, as we, get, as we depart for the place of final resting of Sister King. Musicians, please continue. 